Are you wanting to add some cozy cottage style charm to your home on a budget, but you don't know where to start? This is the video for you. Today, I will be sharing my top 10 best thrift and secondhand buys that you can find at a thrift or antique store to get that cottage style. Good morning, friend. If we haven't met, my name is Rachel from the blog StoneCottageHome.com where we cultivate the art of home. Today we have a special treat and I'm super excited about our visit since we will be joined by lovely ladies here on YouTube. They will be sharing with us their top 10 tips for thrifted and antique home decor in the cottage style. First off, we have Rachel from the Sweet and Simple Home. Rachel loves making her home beautiful little by little. Her peaceful channel is full of ideas for decorating our homes. Just about everything she shares on her channel is done on a tiny budget. And we have Stephanie from the channel Consider It All Joy. Stephanie's decorating style is a delicious eclectic mix of cottage, French country, and old world European. She shares home decor, room makeovers, and DIY on her channel. We will begin with smaller, usually cheaper items and work our way towards the larger, sometimes more expensive pieces. For some extra fun at the end, I'll share with you a bonus category that I really enjoy. Now for today's visit, grab your cup of tea and let's get started. We will begin with toys. Whenever we're looking down the toy aisle, I'm always looking for vintage inspired toys, no surprise there, primarily because they promote imagination and playtime, creative playtime. Also, I look for hard side surfaces such as metal or wood because they're more enduring than plastic and they can be disinfected. One such example is this charming hand carved wooden train set. There are a few more pieces and it comes apart, which helps to build building skills. The fact that it's wood means it can be disinfected and it's durable. On one trip down the toy aisle, I found this adorable little cast iron skillet. It really is cast iron. It was about $7 and I can just see a little girl pretending to flip her pancakes for breakfast. Another example is this old-fashioned pickup truck that we found for about $7. The doors really open, the metal hood pops up, you can see the engine inside, you can see the workings underneath. Something like this will keep a little boy playing for hours. And it's adorable! In this category, I will say that many of the items I use are timeless and therefore I use them year round, such as art, brass candlesticks, baskets, books, transferware. So these items I will feature in other categories. This is a great category for upcycling, dupes, and exercising that DIY muscle. Now in some thrift shops, they will put out their holiday decor year round. So it's a really good idea at the end of each season to put a note in your phone of items that you would like to buy or dupe or DIY so that you'll have an idea of what to look for. Other stores will save their holiday decor and bring it out a month or two before the holiday. So it's always a good thing to remember that and start looking for those things when they stock their shelves with all the holiday stuff. This category is fun. It expresses your style personality and it's great for experimenting. I kind of think of this category like the jewelry of an outfit. Usually the items are smaller, more attention grabbing, and they carry a punch that really defines what your style is. 
Now, one exercise you might try as you are defining your style is to pick apart some of your favorite inspiration photos and find those little things that set the style that you really like. The good news is, for any of you starting out on this cottage decor journey, is that there are many branches of cottage style decorating. There is the typical English cottage, there's French country cottage, modern cottage, boho, and many others. The thrift store is an ideal place to find those accent pieces that will define whichever branch of cottage style you love best. My favorite is the English country cottage style, so I curate items from antique and thrift stores that support that look. If you are interested to learn more about the branches of cottage style, please leave a comment below. With the inspiration from these pictures, I now have a shelf similar to the one on the left and a collection of the Blue Spode Spice Jars. You will remember from a recent video, I was gifted an antique salt cellar that is similar to this inspiration picture. These antique and cottage style inspired containers add a spark of joy to baking and cooking. Another thing as you get more specific with your home decor style is to think outside the box and check eBay, estate sales, Facebook marketplace, even Craigslist to find the really unique items. As I poured over my favorite inspiration pictures for the English cottage style, I noticed certain decor elements popping out again and again. This type of decor is one that you can use year round and I've used these at Christmas time and in the fall. This is a wonderful good base to build your decor from. I have found these candlesticks at different thrift and antique stores ranging in price from about a dollar to five dollars each. So, I have quite a collection, and for those of you who are interested, I'm going to include these in my giveaway. I have several items in different categories that I would like to include in this giveaway. If you're interested, the information on how to enter will be listed at the end of the video. If you are new to cottage style decorating, I recommend trying out this category first. Baskets are inexpensive, and this is an easy way to explore your style. If a basket doesn't work for your intended purpose, or you don't really care for it, simply re-donate the basket. One thing to keep in mind is that baskets can be altered. You can cut the handle off, you can remove the lining, you can also change it to be more your style through painting, staining, or even decoupage. For example, I have this little basket. I really like the shape of it. I'm not a fan of the lining, which can be removed, and these odd little curly cues on the edge, I intend to just clip off and slide the pieces out. I have found that one of the best things you can look for when shopping for baskets are ones with the straight sides versus the tapered sides. They hold more. They also line up better on a shelf together. The second thing I look for is sturdiness. I will squeeze the sides and even check the bottom to make sure that it is made of even wood or a harder material to stabilize the basket. In addition to being sturdy and looking for a good solid bottom, I also look for solid wood handles. I often look for oak splint. This is another oak splint basket. It is handmade. It's called a harvest basket. I found this one for $7 at the thrift store. And then not a week later, two weeks later, I saw a very similar basket for $40 to $45. So be sure to check your thrift store first. Baskets are ideal for adding that homey cottage style to your home as well as practical storage. One of the easiest ways to incorporate the English cottage style into your home is through dishes. The English love their china for everyday use and for decor. Some unique ways for using dishes would include wall art, jewelry catchers, saucers under plants, or even drawer organizers. Now, I love dishes and my husband and I love to entertain, which means the creation of tablescapes. 
This past Christmas, my neighbor and I hosted a Victorian Christmas tea party with only thrifted, gifted, or borrowed tableware. This table setting is a great example of how you can use thrifted dishes in a mix and match way for multiple settings. If you're interested in seeing the entire process from inspiration to shopping to laying the table, you might enjoy watching my video. When choosing dishes, I would recommend looking at your inspiration pictures to see how the dishes are combined. I choose colors that will mix and match well so that I can create many more kinds of tablescapes than just a single matching set. In this category, it's a good idea to have the abundance mindset. There are so many full and partial sets of china out there that you really can find what you're looking for. I try to get a good base of white dishes and then I build from that dishes that I know will incorporate well with each other. You may remember this elegant sugar bowl from last summer. It didn't have any markings, but I've been hoping since then to find more pieces to this set. This new hole in the wall thrift store was introduced to me by a friend and sometimes these are the perfect places to find an obscure item. As you may have noticed, posted on the door was a sign that everything in the store was half off. In the case with these antique and vintage dish sets, lo and behold, what did I find? But this exact match to my sugar bowl for $25. This is a great example of having the abundance mindset. Truly, you will find what you're looking for if you have patience to wait for it. Dishes and even cookware can be pretty and practical. I spotted this copper pot on the shelf at the thrift store for about $2. Now the tinning has worn away on the inside here. And I understand you can have them retinned. It's not something I've looked into yet, but I enjoy hanging this on the wall and this warm glow of metal giving a wonderful cottage touch to our kitchen. On another trip to the thrift store, I found this large pot. It doesn't have a lid, but it also has the good solid brass handles. It's very heavy, and it was on the shelf for just $2. And one of my favorite things that I use every day is this little cottage style copper kettle. It boils water so quickly and looks charming with the steam coming up the spout and I just love making my daily tea with this copper teapot. Now this is one of those examples of china that can be used in a unique way. It is hand painted, it's from Bavaria, and this could be used in a drawer for brushes and combs or any kind of small items that you wanted to organize. I'm including this in the giveaway as well. Another way to get that wonderful cozy vibe that cottages seem to have is through textiles. I always look for textiles that can be machine washed versus ones that require dry cleaning. And when I was in the midst of our English cottage guest bedroom remodel, I had vintage inspired cottagey textiles on my shopping list. Specifically, I was looking for some curtains that had kind of a more subtle pattern because you know English love to put pattern upon pattern. So as I was looking through the textiles at the thrift store, I came across three large curtain panels in this beautiful green color. All three panels cost me $5.40 and turned out perfect for the bedroom. For those of you who have been following this channel for any time, you know how much I love tea, entertaining, creating tablescapes, and throwing tea parties. With that in mind, I always look for vintage textiles that are possibly handmade, and I came across this entire collection from the thrift store, and they were about 50 cents each. I think that would make the most adorable little napkins beside your plate at a tea party. Other textiles on my list that I always look for are throws, 
quilts, and pillows. Specifically, I look for feather or down filled pillows. And surprisingly, these can be washed in your washer and dried in the dryer and they do just fine. Here is a collection of cottage style textiles from around our house. The white matelassé coverlet I bought for about $10 several years ago. And all of these pillows here are either feather or down filled and none of them were more than $5. The hand crocheted rose afghan was also about $5. The quilted green velour pillow, which is down filled, was originally by Pottery Barn. I'm looking forward to hosting another tea party sometime this spring or summer with a vintage inspired theme and these little hand embroidered napkins would be ideal. Another cottage style textile I've recently been learning about and looking for are handmade wool rugs. These rugs are beautiful, practical, and long lasting. What kinds of textiles do you look for at the thrift store? This is such a fun category. Matt and I both have a love for books, which is wonderful because books are one of the distinctive elements of the English cottage style. On the left here, you see a decidedly English looking study and on the right, the corner of our living room. This similarity took me by surprise and just goes to show that those inspiration pins will crop up in your home sometimes when you're not planning it. Now I would break up this category into different sections. For me, I use books as inspiration and here are some of my favorite cottage style decor books. There's a whole series of these perfect English design books and you will find a list of my favorites in the description box below. So besides inspiration, I also like to dig a little bit deeper into specific subjects that I'm interested in, like the history of English design. This book is Colifax and Fowler, The Best in English Interior Design, and it has wonderful illustrations and pictures giving the history of the designers that actually created the English cottage design. This one here is also an older interior design book featuring the English cottage style. It is called English Country by Julie Fowler. And as you all know, I love art. So I'm learning more about art. For example, this one, make your own picture frames. This was $1.50 and it goes in depth on the different kinds and styles of frames and how they're constructed. This one is handmade frames and it is more of how to change the frame that's already made. Now, when you're shopping for books in thrift stores, in antique stores, they will generally come by ones and twos, a steady trickle, but on occasion, you will hit the jackpot. I went to the antique store one day and there was two or three, I don't know, four shelves of these gorgeous hardcover, beautifully bound history books from Scotland, Ireland, London, and England, and a big sign that read, I think it was something like 25 books for $20. So another tip for you book lovers, you probably already look for books in thrift stores and antique stores, but you might start looking for estate sales, church sales, or the occasional library sale. Now, not this weekend, but next weekend, Matt and I will be going to a big library sale and I am so excited. Now, if textiles are one of the strongest elements that contribute to the feeling of coziness in a cottage, the sister element would be lighting. You will notice when you look at inspiration pictures for cottages that they have this warm ambient glow that seems to just float over the room and it welcomes you in. Now since lighting comes in many different forms such as overhead, pendant, wall sconces, floor lamps, table lamps, there are endless possibilities for customization and there are so many different styles that you are sure to find one that fits 
your branch of the cottage styled home decor. I would encourage you to experiment in this category to figure out what colors, what styles and shapes that you like in lamps and light fixtures, wall sconces, and then just practice. Practice what colors and what mix of things on your tables, lamps, side tables that feel good to you and that work with the way that you live. Again, this is another place to pour over your inspiration pictures to see how the lighting is used, where the lamps are placed. This will give you good clues on how to set up the lighting for your room. This cozy ambient cottage style lighting can be achieved through large lamps, overhead task lighting, or accent lamps. This is also a great category for DIYs, dupes, or thrift flips. Don't be afraid to experiment in this category. Maybe start small and buy some lamps that are super cheap and try painting, try decoupage, try swapping out shades and put them in different areas in your rooms to, feel, to see how they feel to you. In some of my favorite cottage inspiration pictures, I noticed that most of the lamps had pleated fabric lampshades. I love this look. It is so homey and it has a little bit of that handcrafted European feel to it. So I began looking into them and realized how expensive they are and I started wondering if I could make them myself. If this is something that interests you, I have a video on how to make DIY pleated English cottage lampshades and I will link that for you in the description box below and in the iCards above. There are so many little corners of the house where you can tuck a lamp that I'm always on the lookout for one and when Matt spotted this one when we were out shopping today, I loved it. It is solid wood. This center part here looks like barley twist. And then when we got home, we found this harp and finial that I had already left over from another lamp. This was $5.29. Most thrift stores have a testing station, so be sure to check out your lamp before you bring it home. From these favorite inspiration pictures, I have been on the lookout for these English cottage style lamps. These are the prices they were listed at online. I found the blue and white chinoiserie lamp for less than $5 and the French bouillette lamp for $7, both at the thrift store. Here was the exciting day I found the blue and white chinoiserie lamp. Another good lamp tip is while you're at the thrift store, be sure to try on shades for height and width to get the perfect fit. This French bouillette lamp lends an air of elegance and English formality anywhere in the house I've decided to use it. And it's been making the rounds. In this category, I would like to give away this sweet little lamp. It has a metal shade. It looks hand painted, it has warm colors, and it's just so cozy and little, it could fit into any little corner. So if this interests you, be sure to stick around to the end of the video where I will share with you how to enter the giveaway. Now, as we have moved through this list of top 10 thrifted cottage home decor items, I've alluded several times to the fact that I love art. So here we are at one of my very favorite categories and one that I find I have to put on the brakes for. So two things about mirrors. Number one, you can use a mirror to set your style through the frame choice, the shape, the size, and even through the silvering. And two, a mirror is wonderful for reflecting light and visually expanding your room. For setting your distinct style taste, this convex federal style mirror is an excellent choice. Here at the thrift store, we have quite an array of dresser mirrors. And among them, I see a project mirror. I love the top shape on this mirror, the width, the length, and especially this wooden carved motif at the top. Now the tag says 
But at this particular store, if you have filled a punch card, then any purchase over $20 automatically gets $10 off. This piece would be a lovely expression of the French country cottage style. Be sure to look in obscure corners of the thrift store for large mirrors. I found this elegant antique French style mirror in the back of the store with the headboards for only $5. Okay, so art. I don't think you could say that English is art. But have you ever seen an inspiration picture from a cottage that did not include art? They have art in the library, art in the sitting room, the living room, the kitchen, the pantry, the hallway, and even in the loo. If you will look at your inspiration pictures, you will notice that art is displayed many different ways. There are gallery walls, they are hung in a haphazard type way. They can be hung in grids. Sometimes they are stacked on small slivers of walls, or sometimes they are hung singly on a small wall. Since art is quintessentially English, I do enjoy studying different inspiration pictures to figure out exactly what I want. If this subject is of specific interest to you, you may enjoy my video on how to hang a gallery wall. When I am treasure hunting for English cottage style art, there are three things that I look for. First, and most obviously, the art itself. Is it the subject, the color, and the style that I'm looking for? Two is the frame. I do look for a mixture of frames. I like the dark wood, I love hand carved, but I also love looking for the antique plaster or gold leaf frames. And three, I like looking for the frosted glass. Since the purpose of putting art on your walls is to enjoy looking at it, I find that the regular glass most art comes in to be very distracting to the point where the glare keeps you from seeing the art most of the time. So my solution is to look for the non-reflective frosted glass that also you can find pretty easily at the thrift store. Then, once you have your collection, you can combine the frame, the art, and the frosted glass to have a perfect piece to incorporate into your English cottage gallery wall. You will find when looking through pictures of English cottages or country homes that there is an interesting mix of mediums in the artwork, such as oil paintings, hand-colored lithographs, prints, needlework, and even dried flowers. By choosing a mixture in the mediums of your art, you will be able to express your personality in style much more clearly. So for example, I found this needlepoint rose with the antique frame. I believe it was about $7 at an antique store. Often you will find in English artwork that they love to include portraits. It may be someone that they're related to, an ancestor from hundreds of years back, or it could just be one they adopt. An example of an oil painting that you might find at a thrift store is this serene seascape. It has a nice wooden frame with a linen slip and soft colors with birds. You can tell that someone has a ship back here. For those of you out there that are art lovers, I would like to include this seaside oil painting in my giveaway. Be sure to stay tuned to the end of the video where I will give you instructions on how to enter the giveaway. You may remember this piece I found from last fall. It's a bridal portrait with a beautiful gold leaf frame and high quality glare reduction glass. The thrift store had it marked for $11, but they were running a sale 75% off, so I only paid $2.75. Now the wonderful thing is, I've had this in my stash for several months, not quite knowing what I would use it for, but after our shopping trip this morning, I did go ahead and pick up this lovely, charming cottage painting. Another tip for you if you're uncertain about a piece of art 
is a little risky, but I have found it works well for me. Take a picture of the art on your phone. When you get home, you can virtually compare that art to what you already have or to different rooms in your home to decide where it would fit. We take our beautiful frame for $2.75 and this lovely painting and they fit perfectly together. Here we are in the biggest category of all or where the items are usually the biggest. I would like to quote from one of my favorite British designers, Rita Koenig, who says, buy well, buy slowly. I think this is a good mantra for this particular category, but really it can be applied well to all of them. If you have searched through your inspiration photographs and you know what you're looking for, be selective. Have an abundance mindset here and don't settle on the first piece that resembles what you're looking for. Be sure the pieces are well made and sturdy or that you know how to do the repairs that they may need. Also, when shopping for furniture, go with an open mind. It's not how something looks sometimes, but what it can be. For example, you can cut the skirt off of a sofa and make it look mid-century modern. You can swap out the legs on a chair. You can paint. You can strip and restain a piece. You can change the hardware. There's so many options out there. I would also say in this category, if you do have very specific pieces in mind, like I sometimes do, broaden the scope of your shopping from antique and thrift stores to Craigslist, OfferUp, Facebook Marketplace, estate sales. You will be surprised. With a little patience, that very item will pop up at some point. These three secondhand pieces of furniture on the right are very similar to the inspiration pictures I had pinned. The antique headboard I thrifted for $4.23, the reading chair was $25, and the antique English round drum table was free compared to over a thousand online. Now let's bring this all together. Everything you see in this picture here, except the wall sconces, was thrifted. In this glimpse of our master bedroom, you will see secondhand side tables, thrifted lamps, thrifted books, thrifted down and feather filled pillows, and a secondhand headboard. Okay, that wraps up our top 10 thrifted home decor cottage style items. Now I will share with you my bonus category that I'm most excited about. Then we will move on to the instructions for how to enter the giveaway. This last bonus category is one where I have done the most shopping. This is where I began my thrifting journey and I have benefited in so many ways. Now I don't know if you've guessed or not, but several of you have been asking about my personal style where I buy my clothes and how I combine my outfits. So this is just a very short sneak peek, but this bonus category is clothing. Here are a stack of sweaters. They are all name brand. They've been gotten at wonderful prices. So I will give you a sneak peek of what my closet looks like on a seasonal basis and a few of the outfits that I have had so much fun putting together from thrifted clothing. In this category, probably 90 to 95% of my wardrobe is thrifted. I use the capsule wardrobe method and I choose a color palette per season. With these challenges, it is so much fun to hunt through and see what you can find. And when you find that perfect name brand piece in just the right color, it is so exciting to come home and see how many outfits you can make. I hope you enjoy this sneak peek into my wardrobe and find some inspiration to look at the clothing while you're shopping for other home decor items. In this case, I was shopping for dress clothes and my color palette was black, white, gray, and lilac. From these seven pieces, let's see how many outfits we can make. The brand names represented here include Tahari, 
Talbots, The Limited, Loft, and Ann Taylor. By using a color palette, we can take these seven pieces and make 10 different outfits for under $50. Here is a peek into my closet this fall and winter season. These are the tops and sweaters I've been wearing. You will probably recognize some of them from our visits. Okay friends, the moment we've all been waiting for, the giveaway! First, I would just like to say thank you so much for hanging in and watching to the end of the video. It truly is a blessing to me and it really helps my channel. This giveaway has four categories. There is art, china, the candlesticks, and the lamp. In order to enter the giveaway, you will need to do three things. First, subscribe to my blog, which you will find a link in the description box below the video. Second, subscribe to the channel. And third, leave a comment that says which of the four categories you would like to win. Once the winners are selected, I will announce who has won in each category in my next video. I hope you have found our visit today informational and inspirational. If you have a category or two from our list today that happens to be one of your favorites and you would like to dive deeper, leave a comment below with the name of the category and your questions. I would love to make more videos for you on these subjects. To continue the fun learning about cottage style home decor, remember to watch Rachel's and Stephanie's videos. You will find a playlist with their videos in the description box below. I am so grateful to these ladies for joining us today and sharing with us their best tips on how to create the cottage style in your home on a budget. So I got this frame and glass for, I forgot. Thank you for stopping by to visit today, friend. Until next time, take care.